right, here's the video about this box. So, <clears throat> here's uh, here's how it's all set up, and and this little 3D part here that snaps into there. Your, your air compressors down in there somewhere. <clears throat> you got an extra air horn, air port, an extension cord on a reel, a uh, power thing there, and there's a battery down in there. Okay, so I bought this thing, and the thought process behind buying it was that I could just buy this thing, have that capability like this now <laughs> right from the start i i said to the guy I go uh well i need to weld and he he's like oh well i sell a welder i'm like well i got my own welder so this is the second time i've bought a 2000 watt inverter and the guy told me i could weld on them right well <laughs> i guess if you have these little itty bitty welders you know but you can't weld big stuff, you know. This guy sells a welder that goes with this thing. And uh, he's out of stock of them. And they're like 700 bucks or something like that. And I think it's just you plug it into this DC port on the side. Over there. There's a DC port. <clears throat> right here. This one. That's a DC port. It's actually the same plug that I had to hook up my wind system to my RV. So I'm, I'm familiar with this plug. So the thought process was like, okay, I'm gonna get all this stuff, you know, cause I'm out here. I was in the, I was in the motel and then uh, I'm moving out here. And I basically was waiting on this thing. Well, get the cleanup done but then it turned out that I was waiting on this thing uh, to, to come back out, to come out here. So, the, the, it was like, there was a few reasons why I bought this. Obviously, I needed power, right? And I was sick of those little generators. Like, you don't even realize. Like, changing the oil in those little things and the stupid little thing is what burned everything up maybe you know I'm still not sure how it did it but anyway that's a whole other thing but the I'm just sick of the little generators and I had conceptualized I'm like why can't I just run you know off my truck to da 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 so I had actually looked into this kind of system a while ago and I actually found these guys a while ago right and then I refound them when I was thinking about doing a DIY. And mainly I didn't want to do a DIY on this. Well, not mainly. There's a few reasons. You know, uh, number one, a DIY isn't really as insurable as this. That's not necessarily number one. That's a big, big thing, though, because I just learned all this lessons from insurance. And part of that is like, what's insurable and what isn't insurable? Well, this thing in its form is insurable in its entirety. So that was part of it. The, and then also just building something like this out in a motel or out here with no real power. You know, the motel had like a plug-in outside and, you know, and just exposing my tools to all those people around there was going to be sketchy, you know, like dragging a bunch of tools in there to build this fucking thing in the back of my truck, right? So I just wasn't really um, that hyped on it, on, you know, as DIY as I love, this situation just was a situation that, that seemed to me that I just needed to fucking use some of this money that I got out of my insurance money to, to, to just kickstart what I needed to do. And it would fit well with the trailer, the backhoe, the truck. 
I mean, that whole capability between that whole set of stuff right there is just pro, right? It would have been a nice to have the box before I um, had to do all that work out here, but you know, it, these guys take like uh, <laughs> forever and a lifetime to get these things to you. Like it's at least one month and it was over a month for me. I decided to, to buy it and you know, I I uh, talked to the guy and the guy, the, the, the owner, I guess, or the salesman or whoever I was talking to, uh, you know, it was all, you know, it was all a decent situation um, as far as, you know, but then like the time that it was supposed to come came and went and I contacted them and they said they were going to refund me. And then, honestly, I got scared that I was just going to get jacked for my money. I was so worried that I was just going to lose that money. Like, this was a, some, like, company that was folding underneath all this bullshit. And they were just going to be like, well, you know, fuck him, you know. Because <laughs> I just had so many fucking things like that in my life that I just, you know, that's all I think about, you know, is people fucking me over. And it just happens time and time again. So, uh, so I, I kind of, I, you know, I sob story the guy. I'm like, you know, I need to weld. I got some people out vandalizing my property. Um, you know, and, uh, so, okay. And so he, he, what he gets, the, he sends the box, right? So the box gets here and, and I, I found this place to install it called Bend Trailers. Now they had worked on my trailer, they installed my hitch in my truck, and super nice people, and did a really good job on everything they did, right? So they, I got, they uh, worked, or, or uh, they accepted the delivery of the box, and then had it for a fucking whole week. <laughs> so the box literally sat in the shop for another week after like the two extra weeks that I was waiting on the box in the first place, right? Over the month that they originally said it would be, you know. And of course, you know, they say a month, but then the next time after you've sent them the money, it's, uh, it's fucking um, uh, four to six weeks. And then like the time that the checks in the mail, like they don't put the order in until they get the checks in the mail. And then, yeah, so yeah, I was weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks extra. And, you know, probably three, three or four extra weeks in the motel waiting on this thing, right? Maybe three, two or three, three, somewhere in there. Okay. So it gets here. It sits in the, it sits in bin trailers for a week waiting for a slot. Because they wouldn't make the appointment until they had the fucking thing in, right? So they get the thing in, they made the appointment, it's a week later. I get it. And, okay, I got it, I'm ready to go, right? I got my freezer, I got my cooler, I got all my shit. I get out here, and it's not working at all. Like, my truck's just idling, and it isn't keeping up power at all right so I call the company you know and it's and they're like oh it's your truck your truck's messed up right or it's the installers right they, they installed it wrong or you know your truck's messed up or something like this right okay great so I got to go back to the freaking motel again uh, to have my truck checked out okay so I get my truck truck yeah I get my truck checked out and Everybody's saying, oh, your alternator's fucked up. Oh, your alternator's fucked up, right? Okay. So I take it to a shop, and they're like, no, your glow plugs are fucked up. Okay. Or your glow plug controller, then it all set up. Oh, those are the glow plugs. Six of eight of them were bad or whatever. And the only thing those glow plugs do is right at the start is heat up the diesel to kind of kickstart the motor. They, they're they not a continuous thing like a spark plug, right? Which is what I thought, right? So 
they started playing off my own ignorance of how all this shit worked and started telling me that my fucking truck was causing the problems with the box, right? That the low voltage of my truck was kicking the box on and on fire. Well, the only time my truck would be low voltage is when it was first starting. There was no problem with the alternator and those glow plugs, but I didn't realize this until oh way down the way that the glow plugs weren't like a spark plug. They weren't running all the time, pulling down that voltage all the time. They were just fucking right at the start, which the box is supposed to kick on at a certain voltage anyway. So it's not like it starts right when the truck starts anyhow. So they're trying to tell me that the problems with my truck, which were with the glow plugs, but the, you know, the only that noticed I've had now, the only difference is the truck starts a lot easier on the cold mornings, not being plugged in. That's it. That's all those glow plugs did. So, um, I, and the whole time I was driving around with the glow plugs, trying to figure out like if my, Am I getting better gas mileage? Is the truck running better? You know, I'm like, I can't tell the difference, right? And I'm telling this to guys that build this fucking box. So they obviously know I don't know shit about diesel motors, right? So they're fucking taking, oh yeah, it was your truck that's fucking up our box, right? Okay. So now there's a fucking problem with the box. I get it back from the shop and it's doing the same thing. Okay, so now the guy has me beating on, now the guy has me beating on the bottom of the box to unseize some part, and I'm like, uh, so then I go back to Ben Trailers, and they notice one of the buttons is messed up, right? Now it's a button, it's a physical button, right? Push it, in and out, in and out, in and out. Here, we'll just look at him right now. This little button right here, right? See how that goes in and out? Like this, they're all the same. They're all the same kind of button. But that one's red, and that one, those are all blue, right? That button that's the red one is was broken. Like it was just depressed in, right? They're actually trying to tell me that that button being broken like that was from my truck. Like my truck could physically break this fucking button, right? Okay. So now I still got all the same problems and you know, I'm like fucking at a loss of what to do. They're telling me it's my truck. I'm the installers are swearing they did a perfect install and the shop SP auto of bend is telling me there's nothing wrong with my truck. Then I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I, tell this fucking company's tech that I'm taking the box into the shop, the auto shop, and I give him the phone number, the name, and everything in the text, right? And I even say that we can have a third party check the installation, right? Because this Ben Trailers was actually thinking about carrying these things, right? And so... I have, that you know, that was from the start, the box was problems first. And, oh, they, they installed it wrong. Or, oh, it's your truck. And, you know, oh, it's not our box. Never was it their box. But it was always the box. And it's still the box. Okay? So, I take the thing into the shop, right? And after this huge nightmare going back and forth, trying to get them to make the arrangements with the correct shop, because they just fucking glassed over my text and were communicating with Ben Trailers instead of S&P Auto, okay? So I take it to fucking S&P Auto. They, they, they get it, they tear into the box and apparent and oh uh CIC sent a box of parts to be replaced okay so apparently in that box of parts he sent the wrong part or he sent not enough parts or missed whatever that these people then had to go and buy a, the part that he forgot to put in and then they had to go through all this stuff right 
So what they did then was take advantage of the situation. Okay, so they had agreed to do this work for, I think, like 200 bucks, right? And, and then the part wasn't in there, so then they had to drive. And so at that point, their fucking fee went up to $470. And I was wandering around the neighborhood the whole time. And I literally only saw the guy in the back of the truck once. So... They were on the phone with CIC. So S&P Auto was on the phone with CIC. CIC sent me their phone logs showing how long, right, that the whole situation was, right? So all of a sudden, S&P Auto's like, well, we want double the fucking agreed sum. They wanted over double. They wanted this alternator test and they wanted four hours of labor instead of two hours of labor, all because of apparently a $15 diode that wasn't included in the box of parts. And apparently that was what was really the problem, but the box still doesn't work. So I don't really know what the fucking problem is or who's lying to me or what the fuck's going on at this point. I hate the fucking thing, right? I'm on the phone with the fuck guy i'm like what the fuck pam and they're like man they're fucking ripping us off i'm like are you what are you kidding me i I don't believe you i think they're in good shop i left the fucking review i took it in for the alternator they said it wasn't the alternator it was the glow plugs you know if you take it into a, a bad mechanic they're gonna fucking be oh yeah your alternator's out your glow plugs are out you have all kinds of problems well they didn't do that they just were like it's your glow plug so i figured they were a good honest shop well, they were with me, but then I they, they, they commented on the value of this box, right? And I think they just, they just become, they just became, you know, just uh, horrible people all of a sudden when they saw how much this thing retails for, right? And then didn't have all the parts sent and... And so they just decided to say, fuck. So they were literally going to keep. We are not going to release the vehicle until we get all our money. I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? And I'm already, you know, like 800 bucks into this damn, uh, over and above the cost of the box just to get the truck fixed to a problem that it really wasn't having, you know, like the glow plugs. I mean, sure. I, you know, it's good. I replaced those, but. So anyway, now they're holding the truck. They're not going to give it up. And uh, I'm like, you know, screaming at the owner, screaming at the fucking guy that's the the tech guy, which the tech guy for this company, I was kind of singing his praises there for a minute, but he was totally taking advantage of the situation that I don't know shit about diesel motors. And he was trying to convince me that it was my fucking truck physically breaking a physical switch. Like my truck broke that, that, yeah, from its electrical system being low voltage, it was able to physically break a fucking switch is what this guy's trying to tell me. So he's just another fucking capital path, you know, and I, and I literally even sent a text, you're the only thing I like about this company, but that was before I learned the whole situation about the fucking glow plugs. Once I learned that, I knew the guy's just a fucking asshole, just like the owner of the company, not fucking giving all the information when I'm talking about welders, you know, and, oh, and, and this thing's patented, right? And I was telling him, you know, I was thinking about building one myself. I see him, blah, 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 And, oh, well, the people better watch it because we got a patent. And, you know, there's absolutely nothing in this motherfucking box that deserves a fucking patent. They didn't do anything but put a bunch of other people's shit. Here, this guy built a fucking battery. Here, this guy built a fucking box. Here, this guy built an LED light. You know, what they do is just compile a bunch of parts, stick in a box, and get a patent? Like, what the fuck? That's not what patent should be about. I mean, that's just ridiculous. And this is the kind of asshole that that fucking ends up fucking uh, getting a patent just so he can fucking sue people. So he can fucking send out a product that doesn't work for me. And now I'm like, fuck this thing, followers. Build your own. And then this motherfucker wants to sue people like that. And it's like, fuck you, dude. You're a fucking douche. And, you know, the, it, this whole thing is just a military fucking jack-off thing. That's what it is. It's just like these fuckers, 
to get military contracts, you got to fucking jump through all these fucking hoops, right? Have all your shit fucking, and nobody else can produce it, right? I mean, they fucking, they got the, and their manuals and all this. Oh, and here's some more about this S&P Auto. Like, they threw these manuals in the back of my fucking truck to get rained on. They fucking, there's footprints in the bottom of the dams. There's footprints in the damn bottom of this thing. There's handprints. Like, these people at S&P Auto, they want to charge a premium price for doing fucking just a little bit of electrical work and unassembly of a, of a box, right? But this is the fucking, they, 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 they fucking throw my manuals in the back of the truck. They don't even put all the manuals back because there's a whole card that's just missing, okay? They fucking leave the box in horrible fucking condition. There's a fucking dirty footprint in there. The screw was and put in right and these are the fuckers that want to be paid top fucking dollar so the only people in this whole fucking thing that are good people are ben trailers ben trailers is fucking really good but they're not a fucking shop that can tell me what's wrong with my fucking truck and when they were sitting there going, oh dude your alternator your alternator your alternator right i'm like yeah and and we're even having conversations like i should just do it myself like can you imagine if i had fucking gone and fucking bought an alternator and changed that motherfucker tried to myself and it wasn't even the fucking problem oh shit so other than that which you know that you, you know they weren't you know that they were just guessing, right? Like, what else could it be? We're not mechanics, right? So, and of course, this thing, you know, the, the lawyers have been all over it. So, you know, the fucking, you know, oh, you do this, you do that. You fucking can't do this. It, I mean, it, something like this for fucking Oregon is retarded because they say, do not operate it in the rain. Are you fucking kidding me? They say do not operate it with the lid fucking open. In other words, if if you have any of this shit on, they want you to have this lid open all the time. If you shut this lid, they want you to have all this shit off, right? So they just want your box to be open to dirt, rain, shit. Now, this is what happens when people that don't actually do fucking work write shit up for stuff, right? This is lawyers, lawyers that don't know, fake, fake fucking job lawyers that don't know a fucking thing about a toolbox, an electrical plug, not a fucking thing. The most worthless motherfuckers on the face of the planet, lawyers telling me I can't operate my fucking five plus thousand dollar box in the rain? And I got to leave it open to the fucking, the wind and the dust and the bugs and all that if I'm going to use it. And if I misuse the box, well, then it's out of warranty. Ah! Oh, so don't buy one of these fuckers, man. I, you know, the use case for this, you know, these guys are trying to get a huge military contract like this. They want this in all the repair trucks for the military so they can just, you know, whatever. That's, that's, I got a feeling that's their angle and the guy that, that, did all this is probably an ex-military guy kind of get that that indication from talking to him just because you know there's that whole you know lost your soul in basic training that i pick up on so anyway um the cic power box has been the biggest nightmare ever like I'm over a thousand bucks into over and above what I paid for the whole fucking thing, right? Because of whatever problems that it still has that I, that I'm just fed the fuck up to here. Like I tried to return it and then I was like, oh, fine. I'll just do it, whatever. So now literally here's how I fucking operate this thing, right? Is here's my backhoe and there's jumper cables that have this the end plug on it here, right? Right, so then I just plug that right over into here, right over into there, and then it charges the fucking, the batteries, right? Now, last night I forgot the, um, I forgot to unplug that. 
the last time I ran the backhoe. So I left them plugged in and it ran the backhoe batteries down so bad that I had to, it took me hours. I had to run the truck this morning for like six hours or something like that to get the, to keep the, everything going and to charge this up enough to get it to start. So it's just a nightmare. It's, it's a complete nightmare. Now, the, what I'm just trying to do now is I bought a solar charge controller, which is a whole nother video. And through this same port right here, I'm going to connect. But at this point, I might even just dig into the box and wire that shit in directly. I might just leave this undone because that's how I fucking charge a thing. Although, putting the solar charge controller, just having it to go bloop, 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 bloop while I'm using that and eventually just move it over into there in a more permanent situation. But for now, you know, a couple solar panels is going to freaking do me so much better than this, than this situation right now. This is just a nightmare with the with this this thing here it was not worth it for the money that i have spent on that i could have had a really nice solar system almost all the basic stuff you know i might have still been scrapping together like parts for it but because right now man it's the inverters are fucking you can't find them People are fucking just buying up stuff. The survival stuff is just going. So it just like, but people are buying that shit and they're putting it on their shelves and their garages. They're not fucking like, God, I need that thing right now to live off of. You know, that's my situation. But anyway, uh, you know, that's the story of this box. It's, uh, it's just another example of capital paths. You know, people just uh, thinking that the, you know, they got this brilliant idea that they should just get all this money for, for just putting some parts together, you know, and overcharging. I mean, I don't know what the margin is on this thing, but pff, I'm telling you right now, it's not worth it. Like, I can't even imagine, like, it's some shit that some fucking person with just too much money and, and not enough work uses. Because really, it, I mean, what it does, it's like... You know, like the douchebag foreman that fucking, you know, rolls around and just wants to look cool and, oh, I got to come jump your truck because you're an idiot. Well, I got my fancy little jumper cable truck thing here, you know, and I can charge some batteries in the back. But, you know, here's another thing I really didn't like about this box is the, I mean, the box looked really nice, except for one dent from shipping, right? But if you can see this all this that's all the you know this is all the uh uh the finish why couldn't they have put like a nice uh rubber anti-skid or a little piece of carpet style stuff you know something to keep the stuff from sliding around in here i mean it just i just put my battery box my rechargeable batteries and I had to take a couple of the chargers out well they have rubber feet and the rubber feet did that so you know I don't know I don't know how much actual work the people that put this thing together have ever done how like you know the the things that these guys talk about using it for is like when their house power goes out plugging in their refrigerator or um, going camping you know that's that's what the guys that bought the or own their or whatever the owner whoever i'm talking to on the phone that's what they're using it for they're not out in the field using these things to do whatever you know they're making little videos oh look we can jump start a tank or whatever okay great but meanwhile so that's the CIC power box review. And I actually own a, uh, a Bosch power box. And I've never had a problem with that one. Bye.